With Fragrance World's track record, I've been getting a bunch of fragrances and they've been just hit after hit. But I saw a couple that looked pretty interesting. I didn't see much talk about it. Figured let me get all three and let's talk about it. My name is Neeb, welcome back to Aromatics. Today we're gonna be talking or diving into three Fragrance World products. If I'm not mistaken, these are not actually dupes. They're creative inspiration. So they're not really duping anything, but could they possibly smell like something? Yes. So I'm going to do the best that I can to break it down, go into each one of these, and let's just go ahead and get right into it. So it's called Expose, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to expose these fragrances. Do they suck or are they more hits? I'm assuming, honestly, more hits because they've been knocking them out of the park. Let's see. So they've got three different ones. They've got a white one. They've got this gray one, and then there is a black one, but they all have different names, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. So there's a Poor Louis, there's Poor Elite, and there's Poor Unisex. So you open this. Wow. Okay, this is actually pretty sick. So you open it up like so. Reminds me of Arabian Oud. I have an Arabian Oud fragrance that... Okay, yo, this is pretty sick, man. This is pretty sick. What in the actual hell? If this ain't better than some niche fragrance presentations, then I mean, I'd be lying. Look, check this out, man. What in the actual, for real? Okay, yo, <laughs> this is nuts, man. So you got the atomizer there, you can't spray it, but you have to open this little cap and there you go. Insane, insane. All right, poor Louis, let me take a look at the notes and I'll do my best to try and post them here on screen. So top notes of amber, by rose, bergamot, cashmere wood. We've got the mid of tangerine, musk, and then we have a base of sandalwood, saffron, and musk. And here we go. I'm obsessed with this bottle. I'm obsessed. This is crazy. Here we go. Very nice atomizer. Fresh and ambery right off the top. This is very nice. It's clean, a little bit soapy. This is a perfect like office scent. Musk, ambers, and citruses. I'm trying to think of other fragrances that this could be in the similar family of, but it smells in a similar family of like, well, not really. I think that this would smell like similar to what you would use Allure Home Sport, you would go for this. This actually has more pronounced citruses. What this is really reminding me of is like a blend of a couple of fragrances. I'm getting like the Chanel Allure Home Sport blended with Versace Pour Homme. So fresh, a little bit ambery uh, and musky. The citruses here are much brighter than something like Allure Homme Sport and it does have that watery quality that you'll find in Versace. It smells really nice. A hefty dose of musk, but it's very similar to the musk of Alurom Sport, so it's very likable. This smells like a great fragrance, and it's not weak by any means. And, I mean, if this ain't a conversation starter alone, seriously, that's pretty sick, man. As a summer fragrance, versatility-wise and scent profile, I'd give this a 9.5, maybe even a 10. Smells great. Citruses, a little bit of amber, and musk. Think of Versace Pour Homme blended with Chanel Allure Homme Sport. Both of those are hits, they're compliment getters, they work, they smell fantastic, and this smells exactly like that. This smells designer quality, period. For now, nine to a 10 out of 10. We'll wait and we'll let that dry down a little bit, and we'll go from there. The next one I wanna jump into is the black one, the black box, it's called Expose as well. I'm not sure which one this is, so we still have, so that one was Poor Louis, and then we have the Poor L, and poor unisex massive box amazing freaking love it so this one's a gold plaque in the front you open it up and here's the fragrance <laughs> that cap is crazy this is unisex looks like it might be something boozy a little bit you know who knows date night let's see at the top we've got pepper fruity aquatic at the mid we've got guyac wood praline and tonka bean and patchouli and in the base we've got cedarwood amber vanilla and oak moss sounds very interesting and here we go oh this one sprayed right away Ooh, hold up wow okay first off this is strong but it smells really nice think of something like tiziana terenzi's kirke but sexy but sweet but ambery this smells like a fruity fragrance that's ambery that's sexy and sweet so i'm not going to say that this smells like kirke but if you were to take kirke Add some ambers, add some tonka beans, some depth, some sweetness, some sexiness. That's what this smells like. There is an undertone of ultra malt to this as well. So I'm getting this fruitiness. This smells like, that's what this smells like. This smells like if you were to take Tiziana Terenzi's Kirke, blend it with ultra malt, that's what I'm getting with this. It is unisex. It's unisex and my God, this is sexy. And yes, it is unisex. It's bubblegummy sweet. It's got that lavender. It's got some fruits. It's got amber. This is like if Ultramall had a fruity flanker. That's what this would be. This is a hit. This is a 10 out of 10. 
right off the bat, 10 out of 10. Poor Louis was more of an office scent. You guys know I love my date night, my sexy fragrances, dense, sweet, and that's exactly what this is. So for me, this is a 10. Excellent fragrance. Let's move on to the final one, which I'm assuming is going to be poor L. And this is the white one. So I think it might be feminine, but who knows? White looks better. And here we go. Nice. <laughs> this is pretty cool, man. Poor L. Let me see if I can show you guys a little bit more of the detail of Expose. So wait, nope, this way. Here we go. So pretty neat, pretty neat. Now you can atomize it. You want to close it. There you go. You can't atomize it anymore. Okay, so notes for poor L are rose, jasmine, black currant, and then we've got peony, white flowers, sandalwood, musk, and vanilla. So it does sound like it's going to be a more feminine fragrance, but let's see. It's not always going to be the case. Nice atomizer, same thing as the others. Wow. Okay, this smells like a very natural floral fragrance. It's white. I get a lot of that peony and rose combination. It's not one or the other, but I'm definitely getting a little bit of both. Hefty, hefty dose of jasmine. And so the jasmine makes us smell floral, but musky at the same time. When you get a sniff of this fragrance, you're going to smell a lot without it being cloying. And most of what I'm smelling, honestly, is jasmine. This is a jasmine forward fragrance. Jasmine first, then comes the rose and the peony. Those other two florals uh, help as a supporting note. There's more white florals, which really just enhances the jasmine. And then it's creamy and musky at the same time as well. You have that sandalwood, you have that musk. And there's a pretty hefty dose of vanilla. This is actually pretty sexy, man. Jasmine, vanilla, sandalwood, and musk. That's what it smells like. If you like jasmine fragrances, this is a hit. And to be honest with you guys, this is reminding me of something like uh, Cashmere Musk by Arabian Oud. This fragrance right here. Fragrance in the white right there, where my finger is right there. It's reminding me a little bit of that type of fragrance. So... Uh, I'm not going to say that the scent profile smells like it. It's pretty close in the style that it uses the uh, the florals. It's got a decent dose of jasmine. It's just as musky and creamy and vanillic. But this one is a bit sweeter. It is a bit sweeter. And it's not just coming from that vanilla. The jasmine smelled honeyed. I can almost smell the actual nectar of the jasmine flowers. So although it has that vanillic sweetness, it also has a natural sweetness that smells a little bit like honey. Natural nectar does have more of like a honeyed quality. It smells closer to honey than anything like vanilla. Very rich in scent profile profile without being dense and cloying. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. For it to be this complex and for me to be sniffing it this long at the price of a dupe. Yeah, that's actually pretty crazy. I give this one a nine and a half to a 10 out of 10 for women. I actually really like that fragrance. So white florals, creamy sandalwood and musk. And not to mention whenever I see that the price point of these are, are actually mid price range and they smell like that, it easily increases up those score points. So that is something that I do consider. I definitely consider that when uh, giving it any type of rating. I don't think that ratings are necessarily everything because my five might be your 10 or the other way around. But for me, when I'm factoring in these scores, I'm thinking price point, I'm thinking scent profile, and I'm thinking quality. So, so far for Expose or for Expose Poor Louis, we said that it was about a nine and a half at the opening. It's been sitting for about 20 to 30 minutes. I want to see what it's doing on a tester strip. I can't obviously say what these are going to perform like, but if I get enough requests, I'll move these up for the testings or the actual wearing. So let me know down in the comments which one of these you'd like to know a little bit more about, and I can do exactly that. So here we go. We're going to talk about Expose or Expose Poor Louis. This is the one that smells like the Versace Perome blended with the uh, Chanel Lurome Sport. So it has that citruses, the musk, and a little bit of amber. Here we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. It's getting a little bit spicier. There's something in here. I don't know exactly what it's focusing more so on now. It still has a hefty dose of that musk. It has a hefty dose of the citruses. But there's something else that's standing out here. It almost smells like saffron. And that's exactly what it is. So saffron is starting to in increase in this fragrance. And what that's actually doing is making it spicy. It almost gives it like this spicy leather accord in the base. This is a fantastic fragrance. It does smell a little bit more Middle Eastern than most other freshies and stuff like that. And now at this point of the fragrance, it kind of doesn't resemble the uh, two aforementioned fragrances. At this point now, it smells more of something that's literally just fresh and saffron. I can't really pinpoint anything that this would smell like off the top of my head, but I know that right now it doesn't resemble those two fragrances. In the opening, it was much of a safer fragrance. It did have a slight bit of soapiness to it. Now it has a little bit more of that soapiness. It's much heavier on that saffron, so it does have like this spicy leather accord. So in the opening, I rated this at about a nine and a half. In the mid dry down, I'd probably drop it down a little bit because it's not as safe. So in the dry down, I'll give this about an 8.25. So while it still smells great, smells fantastic, I think the versatility of this fragrance, I'm not telling you guys that it smells like it, but the versatility of this fragrance, because it has a similar spiciness to it, would be something like Dior Sauvage Elixir. If wherever you would wear that fragrance, you would wear this fragrance because the opening starts off nice, citric, slightly aquatic and fresh. And then in the mid to dry down, you start getting this uh, spicy saffron 
similar to the spiciness or the quality of the licorice in Dior Sauvage Elixir. I'm not saying that the saffron in here smells like the licorice, it does not, but the spiciness rather. So think of that extreme spiciness from that licorice of Sauvage Elixir and transfer it into this fragrance in a different form as saffron. It started off as a completely different fragrance, but like I said, I'd still give this one a solid eight. So overall score for that fragrance, I'm gonna give it an eight. The next one we cracked into is this Expose Unisex. Oh, it's still, it's still very sexy. This is a little bit different now than Ultramol. I was getting, I got a hefty dose of that Kirke. I got a hefty dose of the Ultramol. And now it's a little bit of something else. And it has those aquatic notes. There's Gaiac Wood, Praline. It's very sweet. And it is, I think, in my opinion, unisex. So right now what it's starting to do is it's getting a bit mossier, more vanillic and sweeter, really, and more ambers. At this point of the fragrance, we're in the mid to dry down. And it's more so about like this vanilla, moss and woods and amber as well. So smells pretty good. The opening rating, I gave this one a 10. At this point, I would give this around a nine. I would give this a nine. This one's a hit. This one's going to be a bit safer than the other fragrance. Louis actually surprised me because it opened up very, very safe. But in the mid to dry down, it changed significantly. It became like something I've smelled from an African brother. I have a friend who's from Sudan and they burn an incense that's sandalwood based with white musk and other things of that nature. And this started to resemble that and saffron actually. And this started to resemble that in the dry down. So it does go much more uh, Eastern taste in that mid dry down, which was kind of a curveball, And that's why I rated it lower. I enjoy it, but I lowered it because of versatility. This one, however, remains sexy, remains uh, uh, pretty ambery, pretty vanillic, and pretty much safer than the Louis. But Louis is still great. It's just much more saffron, much spicier sandalwood and musk. So this one, I think total score, I'll give this one about a nine. Lastly, we have is this Expose Pour L. I really enjoyed this Pour L. Smells like honey jasmine with vanilla and sandalwood. And it still smells pretty similar to exactly what I sniffed earlier. There is a little bit more peony at this point in time in the mid, but it still smells just as good. If anything, it actually got a little bit sweeter, a bit more creamy. Now it's much fattier. It's much more indolic. The quality of that peony, the rose, it's thick, but it's thick in a good way. It's focusing mostly on like this uh, natural honeyed sweetness of that nectar. This is an excellent fragrance for women. And it does remind me a bit of that cashmere musk from Arabian Oud. This is an excellent fragrance. For women, this is a 10 out of 10. It's actually pretty funny that out of all these fragrances, the Femme version is a 10 out of 10. Easily a 10 out of 10, ladies. This is an excellent fragrance. This one, gentlemen and ladies, is the next one up, 9 out of 10. And the only reason I'm going to place this at an 8 is because of the versatility factor. Here in the West, we're not really used to spicy, leathery, sandalwood, musk, citruses, freshies. Instead, we're used to more aquatics and just straight up give me citrus and woods at most. So for those of you that are a little bit more trained and you enjoy more niche DNAs, then you probably will enjoy these, even the brothers and sisters here out in the West. So all in all... These are excellent gems, man. These are gems for real. I have to admit that this is my favorite one. And I think that my sister's probably going to steal this one. And if I had to guess, if my brother gets his nose on this, this one's going to be gone. And for me personally, I think I'm going to be rocking this one. You guys know I rock everything and anything to the gym. So you know your boy's about to be rocking this to the gym. I honestly expected nothing less from Fragrance World. If you enjoyed watching this video, scroll down hit that subscribe button. And while you're down there, let me know what you think about these fragrances. Have you ever even heard of these? Because it was up until about last week when I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw these, I was like, bye, bye, bye. So I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, peace.